Lewis dot symbols are a nice way to count electrons in atoms and then eventually we'll study molecules. So Lewis dot symbols of the atoms represent only the valence electrons, only the outermost electrons, and so you don't count electrons in shells that are full, the inner shells, or sometimes they're called the core shells. And so what we see here is you use the element symbol, so here it's represented by an X, and then you can put electrons on either of the four sides. So we can kind of think of this as north, south, east, and west, and you can only have as many as two electrons on each of the four sides. So you should never have more than eight electrons, and this corresponds with a full electron shell, which has eight electrons. So if we go to the first shell, uh, this also corresponds with the first period in the periodic table. Uh, we see hydrogen, the simplest element, which has one proton. So the nucleus is represented by a blue dot, and the electron is represented by the red dot, and uh, each shell is a circle around the nucleus. And so with hydrogen, you see the nucleus, and the first shell only has one electron. So you write the element symbol, and then um, normally we start on the east side, but it really doesn't matter. This is just a convention. And you place the one valence electron on one side. And so that is the Lewis dot symbol for hydrogen. And then you go across to helium, and it has one more electron. So we're kind of building up the shells. So helium will look like this. It's got one electron on one side, and the second electron on the other side, the next side. Uh, usually we go in that order counterclockwise, starting with the east side. So helium, Lewis dot symbol looks like this, and now that is a full shell. Since the first shell can only have as many as two electrons. And then we go down to the second shell, which is the second period on the periodic table. Uh, you see lithium. It's got the two electrons that helium had in the first shell, uh, but now you start a new shell. So the second shell has one valence electron. So just the one electron in the second shell. So lithium's Lewis dot symbol looks like this. Beryllium next has one more electron. And remember, we don't count the closed shells. So beryllium has two electrons. We go over to boron. Now it's got three valence electrons in the second shell. So we add one more. Now we got three dots. And then carbon has four. So we put one on each of the four sides. And then uh, when we get to nitrogen, we have something a little different. We've got five valence electrons in the second shell. And so now we have to start pairing electrons. So now we have two electrons on one side. Oxygen has six valence electrons. So we go like we normally do. And we'll put now two dots on two different sides for oxygen. And then for fluorine, we've got seven valence electrons. <clears throat> so now we have three paired dots on three different sides. And then we get to neon, and we have a full shell. So now we've got eight electrons. So two dots on each side, that's a full shell. And then if you were to look at sodium in the next period, you would see that it's got one valence electron, just like lithium. And then magnesium looks just like beryllium, right? So we start a new shell and the Lewis dot symbols look the same. And next we'll learn how to put these together and 
represent covalent molecules.